Okay, so let's start making this uh, vendor function a little more as a real vendor. Um, first of all, you might have noticed when you added these things, um, the, this uh, vendor script, that um, the hover icon is like um, going under the mouse, so you can't place stuff in your inventory anymore. You can see it's very very hard for me to place it correctly to get it light up to light up blue, um, and that is because we are not setting our hover. Y offset at the moment. So we have to go to our inventory, find the hover offset here, and basically we have to right click on it and say find all references. Then you'll see there is this line of code here inside the inside the update function. Um, actually not inside the update function, let's see inside the create layout function and here we are setting this, uh, the, um, the value of the hover y offset and we're never doing that from our vendor. So basically we can go to our vendor and see that it's calling base.start but our chest inventory is actually overriding this uh, start function. Um, and to fix this because we have this great layout here which is called inside start um, we'll have to go to our let me just close this have to go to our chest inventory and underneath the for loop here we have to paste the whole offset y equals slot size multiplied by 0 0.1 or, or just write it right now we can't access the hover y offset and that is because it's private so we have to go back to our inventory and go to definition of the hover y offset here in the top of the inventory script and here we'll have to write it protected. So if we rebuild now, notice that there are no uh, errors. Uh, let me just open up the error window again. View, error list, there we go. So now you'll notice that there are no errors here. So if we save now and jump back into Unity, then hopefully it will work again. As you can see here, the hover Y offset has been set and I'm able to move my items around inside the inventory once again without any problems. Um, now we have to take a look at the vendor. If we open up the vendor, you'll see that we're still able to move the stuff around inside the vendor and that is not intended. So we'll have to jump into the uh, vendor script, vendor inventory, and down here we'll have to override the move function. So public override void uh, no not create layout I was a little too fast there void and there should be this move item function if you double click on that it will override the move item function right now it's calling the base move item but we're not interested in that because we don't want to move anything so simply just delete that and save once again and then jump back into unity here and let's try one more time if we go in here and we try to move the items, you'll notice that we are unable to click them and move them around. So this is more like it for Windor. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not going to make these items disappear when we buy them. If a vendor has an item, we can buy as many items of that, uh, of as many of that item as we want to. But if we take uh, the chest here, let's see what will happen if we try to move it in here. Still nothing. So basically we just fix that move function now. As you can see, we, we can't place it inside here. We can only place it back in the inventory. Okay, so now we'll have to add some prices to the items. And if we open up the XML document, we can add the price underneath here to everything that is sellable and buyable. So we can make a new tag called sell price. And this is the price that the player can sell the item for. And then we can also add a buy price. And this is the item that the merchant or the vendor will sell the item for. Let's just say the sell price is always 10 and uh, the other way around 5. And the buy price is always 10. So I'm just going to add this to every single entry I have here in my XML document. And then when I'm done doing this, we can jump into um, the script and add these properties to every single item so that our items will also, uh, that our items in the game, also will have um, 
the buy price and the sell price on them so that when we serialize our items we can use these prices to show uh, the correct price inside the tooltip as well so let's see materials we'll also put some that and there we go okay so now we can jump to our scripts um, item script and inside item up here we have all the fields defined for our XML document all the tags and we will have to add two more tags so that we can have a sell price and a buy price so we will write property integer buy price and we will write property integer sell price so now we have the two prices and if we check this out if it works let's see where can we do that we can check it out in um, actually in here if we put a breakpoint inside our vendor and we attach this to unity and we can jump into unity and run the game and let's see then it should break in there there we go and then we can inspect new item and see that item has health and it has a base here and there's a sell price of five and a buy price of 10 here so as you can see now all the items has a buy and a sell price which we can use to um, for showing up in our tooltip when we need to buy or sell something the next thing we'll have to do is to add these values onto um, onto the tooltip so to be able to do this we will have to go into the different tooltips here or different items um, and write out some code so that the um, so that the tooltip knows if it's a uh, vendor that we are mouse overing so that the tooltip can show the price if we are at a vendor because we don't want to show price all time um, when we're not at a vendor or something maybe the price is not relevant there um, so we'll have to add that functionality so for this to work we'll need to make sure that each uh, slot actually refers to the correct inventory um, if we go in uh, in here if we ju jump into uh, unity here um, we will notice that if we select uh, if we play our game in non full screen here and we select a slot let's just take one in the inventory uh, not in the inventory actually let's take one in um, our chest inventory then you'll see that each slot has a reference to on trigger enter and exit or pointer enter and exit and you'll see when I click this it is referring to the um, actual inventory prefab um, but that's not what we need because we need to be able to tell when we mouse over um, the vendor so the vendors slots needs to refer to the vendors um, the, the actual vendor script so this means that we'll have to do from the code we have to select each slot when we create them and make sure that it's not referring to this inventory here it will have to refer to the vendor inventory like this and then we'll have to do from the script go to vendor inventory and we'll have to find the uh, pointer enter like this so that each slot doesn't refer to something wrong because right now this one referring to the right one you'll see when I click it it refers to the vendor inventory because it's a slot in the vendor inventory but down here when I click this it's actually referring to the inventory prefab so every single slot needs to know what who the parent is and it needs to call the functions from the parent so this is what we need to do let's jump into our script here and then we'll have to go to the slot and in here we will simply have to go to our start function and we will have to write some code inside this if statement inside the slot so underneath the canvas group we'll have to create an event trigger and we're going to call trigger equals get component uh, in parent actually there we go and it's going to be the event trigger so right now we are making a reference or we are getting the event trigger that sits in the parent so we're trying to access uh, the event trigger that sits on the parent here and when we've done that we'll have to write event trigger dot entry and create an entry and it's an equal to a new event trigger 
dot entry. So now we are making a new entry so that we can add the new uh, this um, entry uh, for it. Oh, I forgot to write new. There we go. So we can add a a entry for this trigger we are creating. Then we are going to write entry dot event ID I think yeah equals event trigger type. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. And what kind of type is well? It's on pointer enter, so we just can write pointer enter. There we go. So that's the trigger type we're creating, and then we are going to add the listener by writing entry that callback that add listener, and then we'll have to write event data. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, let's just call the event data um, this, and then we'll have to feed it um, the function that it should call. Let's see if I can find the right keys here. There we go. Um, and the function it should call is on the parent, right? So we'll have to access the inventory script on the parent, and we'll have to access the show tooltip function on the parent. So what we're trying to do from the script now is to access the vendor item here find the vendor inventory and inside the vendor inventory we are trying to find um, the vendor inventory is also an inventory so we are trying to find the show tooltip function in there so we are going to write transform the parent to get the vendor inventory get component inventory and we're going to say show tooltip and tooltip needs the game object, so it's just our own game object that the slot itself. And then we're going to end it with a um, semicolon here. So the next thing we have to do is to add add the trigger, and we can do that by saying trigger. Dot triggers. Dot add entry. The new entry just created. So all this code we just created basically does. Uh, what I'm going to do now, it basically takes the slot, the code is inside the slot, it finds the parent, it gets the script and everything. Well, then it says, well, my parent, this is my parent. Then it goes to find the function, we goes into the inventory script, we find the uh, pointer enter um, and add it. So that's what I just did here, is basically what we're doing from the script from now on. And this means that I can close this one and then let's jump back into the script real quick and save everything. So now when we saved everything, uh, the tooltip should still work even though we have removed the on pointer enter. So if we click start here and we jump into the game, the tooltip will still be showing up no matter where you uh, what you open. The tooltip is still here even though show tooltip is not added from from the prefab here. So that's good. Now now that works. So before we actually start writing the tooltips out, we'll have to add one more thing to our, um, what's called our vendor inventory here. So up here, we'll have to make it into a singleton so that we can check if the vendor inventory is open. Because remember, we'll have to have a tooltip on our normal back that shows the sell price. And we'll have to have a tooltip inside the vendor that shows the buy price. And to make that possible we'll have to check if the vendor is open and if the vendor is open well then we need to show the sell price on our normal items so we're going to make a private vendor inventory called instance and we are actually sorry about the noise and we're actually going to make it static and then I'm going to make it into a property here and I'm going to remove the set I'm going to say if instance equals null then we are going to say instance equals game object that find object of type vendor inventory so that I always have a reference to it and this is something I've done a lot of times now in my tutorials this is like a singleton so we can reach it from wherever we want to I think that's it for this video in the next video we are going to write out the price on the tooltip so that we can see um, what the price is before we start selling stuff.